Today we're going to be talking about everybody's favorite failed politician, reality star, and father, Jim Bob Duggar. This is a man who in the past five years has watched his son go to prison, has failed an election, has had his television show canceled, has been exposed by a documentary, has been exposed by his own daughter, and has faced a crazy turn in public perception. Now, if you know Jim Bob Duggar, you know him from the series 19 Kids and Counting, where he is in infamous for having 19 kids. In total, he's had really like 22 kids, I wanna say. So that's actually out of control. But let's get down to the nitty gritty. He was born in 1965 in Arkansas, where he was raised as a Baptist, and he was really devout with his religion and ends up meeting Michelle. It's so random, but she happens to be on like a faith journey, and he happens to be a super fundamentalist guy. So they meet and they instantly fall in love. I mean, there's a really cringy story of her talking about the first time they hung out, they prayed for like four hours after their date. <laughs> it's just sparks are flying. Prayers are being prayed. Is that how you would say that? So they get married like right out of high school. Literally, Michelle was 17 years old. They get to work pretty quickly. Jim Bob starts his career as a used car salesman. He also gets into real estate and they have their first son, Josh. They are still just mainstream Baptist and then they have a miscarriage. They received some misguided advice that the miscarriage was their fault because Michelle had been using birth control and they end up feeling so guilty for it. This leads them to be radicalized into the IBLP movement. This is a fundamentalist Christian organization that was founded by Bill Gothard in 1961. Some people have referred to this as a cult. In fact, I think that's what it's referred to on Wikipedia, but that's for you to be the judge of. If you wanna learn more about this organization, I definitely recommend the series, Shiny Happy People. It is so good and it gets into all the details on this. Please note that this IBLP organization is a perfect fit for Jim Bob Duggar because it is an insane patriarchy. The rules are very strict. It's very closed off from society and it's just teaches so many controlling rules rules that he's going to use in the future to control his children. Like I even think there's a rule about like something about like protecting the nest where you are encouraged to have some sort of business that you run so that you can employ your sons once they're adults so you can still be in charge of them even when they're like 40. Then of course <laughs> girls can't have jobs in the IBLP so you can even employ your son-in-laws and then your daughters can stay close and you can be the boss of them too. It's also really competitive. I read Jill's book Counting the Cost and she talks about how there were like the model families in their church and they would just like put the perfect IBLP family up on a pedestal and they always wanted to be the model family and they just felt like they were never good enough. And so once they got the show, this was their opportunity to be like the perfect Christian IBLP family and it made all of them super excited that they finally got to be the gold standard. Anyway, so this is why Michelle pops out 20 something babies, this lady. She really had it in her. From 1999 to 2003, Jim Bob Duggar serves in the Arkansas House of Representatives. It does seem unnatural for him to get into politics, but then I was looking into cults, and one thing that I found very interesting is that a cult will basically encourage their members to get into high positions of power so they can have an influence on legislation, on current events. If they can get one of their members in, that's a win, because then they can just start like babying in all the other members and it's kind of challenging for these people to get in places of power because they're all homeschooled with like weird IBLP curriculum. Then in 2002 Jim Bob Duggar runs for US Senate and of course he loses but the key here is there was a photo taken of him and Michelle alongside their 13 kids going to the polling office and this photo is found by an executive at Discovery Health. This executive reaches out to them and wants to do some sort of documentary on their crazy lifestyle with 14 kids, 13. You might think, why would they do this? Why would a fundamentalist family who's not even allowed to watch TV want to go on TV? And at this time, they were so poor with 13 kids and I think one on the way. They were living in a two bedroom home that was provided by the church. His justification over and over again was it's a family ministry and a way to share their lifestyle and beliefs with the world. But I don't think that's the number one one reason they did all this, even though they say it is. This is one of the first reported times that Josh 
does inappropriate things with his sisters. Jim, Bob, and Michelle know about this and they literally just sweep it under the rug as quickly as possible. In 2003, Josh has another instance of inappropriate behavior and the parents basically just send him off to an IBLP camp. I don't even think it's specifically for the issues he was dealing with. When Josh comes home, Jim Bob reports this to a state trooper, but the state trooper is really just a family friend. So really Josh just gets a stern talking to and it's once again swept under the rug. 2004, we get another docuseries. 2006, we get another special raising 16 children and then there's three other spinoffs because these are doing numbers jim bob duggar again unsuccessfully runs for senate two years later in 2008 tlc brings on the duggars for a full series now i don't know if tlc was aware of josh's freak behavior but also whoever is behind tlc that team has got to be some of the like worst people ever because like all the series are about like train wreck situations and they're like oh definitely do a show about this but you know what i'm also bad because i watch it and enjoy it so yeah i guess all of us are freaks too now the duggars if there's one thing they know how to do it's collect a bag so immediately when the show launches they also do a book and Jim Bob also becomes a professional public speaker. And also they move up the ranks in the IBLP to be one of the model families. And they're super stoked on that. They're like, yes, we're finally like the standard of perfection in our weird church. According to Jill's memoir, this is what the payment deal was for 19 Kids and Counting. Mad Family, Jim Bob's company was to be paid $50,000 per each episode and $65,000 per hour long episode. So like the specials. And later on, the payments would increase to 58,000 and 73,000 if the show reached four seasons, which we all know it did. Notice how it said that it was paid through Jim Bob's production company, Mad Family. That does not mean that the kids were paid. The kids were not paid. They were all exploited. They had all their birthdays and awkward moments and hospital trips and field trips and school and arguments and weird, life moments captured on camera and they didn't even get any sort of payment for that. It all went to Jim Bob's pocket. For years, they just keep doing the show. And let me tell you, the show is so boring. You look through episode descriptions and if there's not a baby being born or a wedding happening, they're just like, we took the kids to the farm. We went to dinner with the Bates family. We show you how we do laundry for 18 kids. To me, that's a TikTok video, but somehow they were milking 30 minute episodes out of this. I'm gonna be honest, I really have not watched that much of it because it's like really not fun to watch. There's like no oomph, you know? Anyway, they drop a book in 2011 because we gotta get that bag. Okay, the kids are getting older and in 2015, Jill and Derek get married. Aww. But here's <laughs> where Jim Bob ruins everything. The day before their wedding in 2014, Jim Bob Duggar tricks Jill and Derek into signing basically the worst contract ever. Also in 2014, Bill Gothard, the leader of IBLP, steps down because there are allegations of SA against him. And keep in mind that the Duggars ended up being way close with this dude. Like, I think some of the girls like spent the summer with him as an assistant, but a lot of people say the assistant gig is like, you don't want the assistant gig. It's like creepy spooky. 2015, this is where shit hits the fan. There is a DHS investigation launched on June 10th, 2015. Obviously the tabloids pick up on this and start leaking the information about the inappropriate behavior that Josh engaged in in the early 2000s. And I'm sure he did it many other times and we just don't know about it because the parents covered everything up. Jim, Bob and Michelle released this Facebook post. Back 12 years ago, our family went through one of the most difficult times of our life. When Josh was a young teenager, he made some very bad mistakes and we were shocked. We had tried to teach him right from wrong. That dark and difficult time caused us to seek God like never before. Even though we would never choose to go through something so terrible, each one of our family members drew closer to God. We pray that as people watch our lives, they see that we are not a perfect family. That was kind of goal, was to show that you were a perfect family. We have challenges and struggles every day. It is one of the reasons we treasure our faith so much because God's kindness and goodness and forgiveness are extended to us. Even though we are so undeserving, we hope somehow the story of our journey, the good times and the difficult times cause you to see the kindness of God and learn that he can bring you through anything. 
girl, what? That is such a crazy, vague way to respond to your son being, I don't even think I can say it on YouTube. It's disgusting. On their damage control world tour, the Duggars decide that their two daughters are going to be the sacrificial lambs and do an interview with Megyn Kelly. And hopefully if the interview goes well, they will downplay the situation and get to keep the show. You find out in Jill's memoir, Counting the Cost, that Josh was such an asshole about this whole thing. He was sitting on a couch across from them while they did this interview talking about what he did to them when they were like 10 years old. This is years after it happened to them, but they have to relive this trauma because they're doing damage control to keep their stupid reality TV show that they don't even get paid to do. It's literally beyond. And Jill talks about how much anxiety and mental health issues it gave her to literally have paparazzi hiding around her house 24 seven, asking her about one of the worst times of her life. And she's being forced to act like basically keep sweet. People are outraged at the way the Duggars are responding to this. People even then are like, yeah, that's super fucked. Why would you do that? And TLC pulls 19 kids and counting. Now, Jim Bob being the money hungry piece of garbage he is, he's like, if I can't pull money out of my kids from 19 kids and counting, now why don't we do a rebrand? So he goes to TLC and is like, what if we do a spinoff where it's the daughters? It focuses on the daughters' lives. We'll just have everybody else pull away. This will be a good way to just rebrand. The daughters get a fresh start and we get to focus on our beautiful daughters. And for some reason it gets greenlit for like 11 freaking seasons, by the way. At this point in time, Jill still doesn't know that she had basically signed her life life away on her wedding night and she's doing a Christian mission trip in El Salvador with her husband and TLC is just being such a narc about this. They're like, you need to get back here now to film somebody's gender reveal. And Jill's like, no, I'm in El Salvador on a mission trip. And TLC's like, well, you signed a contract saying you would. And of course, Jill and Derek are like, mm, no, we didn't. And they start digging through everything and find out that their dad literally tricked them into signing this like <laughs> really inappropriate contract that I don't think would hold up in a court of law. She had no incentive to sign it besides being coerced, you know? I don't even think it has a monetary incentive unless the incentive was like, it may have been like $10 an hour. I'm serious too. Derek, Jill's husband, and Jim Bob actually start to get into it because Derek's like, I thought this was a Christian ministry. We're trying to do that now. Is this not enough? And he's like, no, what you're doing affects way less people than our show. Our show is really bringing the gospel to everybody who needs it. And he's also like, plus you signed the contract. And Derek's like, that contract is super bogus. I'm in law school. I know what to do. Derek is very hated for some legitimate reasons, but he kind of bossed up in 2016 defending his wife against her crazy dad. Finally, Jim Bob Duggar agrees to paying all the kids a lump sum. I think of a $70,000, but if you do the math, it literally comes down to minimum wage. If you totaled up all the hours over the years that the kids filmed, the lump sum would amount to minimum wage. But he's only willing to give the kids this amount of money on the condition that they sign this really restrictive contract, agreeing to participate in any mad family productions that happen for basically the rest of time. A year later, we hit 2017 and counting on officially airs. Basically, every episode is baby, wedding, baby, wedding, baby, wedding, courtship, proposal. Jill is continuing to try to get out of filmings for this. She also really doesn't want to have her birth exposed because like that's kind of embarrassing. I'm with her on that. Jim Bob and the TLC producers as well as like Jim Bob's personal assistants are like hardcore fighting her on this. She has a team of like six different men like trying to guilt her into filming her birth. We get many more seasons of Counting On and then in 2021, it gets canceled. Josh Duggar is arrested for having possession of a judge orders him to serve more than 12 years in federal prison, pay $50,000 in fines and special assessments, and be subject to 20 years of post-release parole supervision. Jim Bob testifies for him and he says he can't remember anything, even though he is very responsible for Josh's destructive behavior over years and years and years. And Michelle does something actually wildly insane. She writes a whole ass letter to the judge. I am writing this letter in regards to the sentencing of my son, Joshua Duggar. My heart is to share some things about Joshua's character that may not be fully known to the court. It is my sincere hope that these things are taken into consideration as fair and just sentences determined. Joshua has friends and family who will love him and support him in his abilities to succeed as a father, husband, business owner, and man, both now and in the future. Joshua has a tender heart and he is compassionate toward others. If someone is having a difficult time, he's one of the first to encourage or try to help them in a tangible way. He and his wife and children have helped many others by doing cleaning and repair projects and lending a helping hand. Joshua has always been a positive and upbeat person. He is wise financially, saving money for the future and- <laughs> Oh my gosh, he's nice and gave money to a neighbor? And so he should not go to jail for the most despicable crime? What do you mean? Oh my god! 
On a personal level, Joshua is an organized and diligent individual. He has a, set a good example of applying himself eagerly to his work and in many other responsibilities that he carries as a husband and father. Joshua is a loving and patient man striving to be a blessing and provide for his family. He has also spent quality time with his wife and children learning life skills together and going on family outings. Side by side, Joshua and his wife have built forts, learned how to work on bicycles. I'm done. After this whole trial debacle, obviously Joshua is sent away for a very long time. Rim Job Duggar decides to run for Senate once again. <laughs> He finishes third out of four candidates in the Republican primary with a 15.3% of the vote. I can't decide if he felt like that would be image repair or if this was like a last attempt to try and save Josh from prison or what, but this seems like the worst possible timing to do this. Of course, counting on is canceled and I think most of the girls are probably pretty happy about that because it's not like they were getting paid anyway. Maybe the Senate run is just scrambling for money since he knows his uh, cash cow has just been taken to slaughter. In 2022, Jill and Derek's arguing with their dad finally comes to an end because they settle for $175,000. In the midst of Jill and Derek continuing to fight with Jim Bob and continuing to threaten litigation, Jim Bob does the shadiest thing. He basically writes up a list of everything he's ever done for Jill over the course of her entire life and says, well, the total of this would have been $150,000. So really, I only owe you $20,000. So I'll give you that and that will be fine. But I'm so happy for her that she won that back and forth. She got $175,000 plus she released the book, which is a New York Times bestseller and they've made good money off that. So I'm so happy for her. She's going to be able to live her best life now. And of course we get to 2023, the year of reckoning for the Duggar family, especially you Rim Job Duggar. First we get shiny happy people, which I've referenced so many times, but it's a great look into the dark side of the Duggar world. We get Jill's memoir, which I think is one of the first times that we focused on Jim Bob as the primary antagonist of the Duggar family. Let me read you this quote from Jill. Over the years, Pops had bought more and more properties and his fleet of private aircrafts now contained multiple airlines, including one with 10 seats. There was no denying that he was a generous man who had helped out a lot of people, but it was also true that he'd grown rich off the show and had fought hard to keep that under wraps. It was hard to face the reality that my own father had seemingly tricked me on the day of my wedding rehearsal into signing such a document. Jill and Derek have calculated that he made well over $8 million throughout the course of the 19 Kids and Counting franchise, which again, I think it's more I hope you guys enjoyed this. 